Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and look, we're gonna do some more fidget spinner things because the first video was popular. It got a decent amount of hits, but there's another reason, and, and it's this. This is a gateway into 3D design and 3D printing. I, I heard from a number of people who said, wow, I can design my own? I can do it in Fusion? This is great. Yes, you can, and Yes, it is. That, that's what's wonderful about this sort of thing. Sure, I, I, I hear it up and down about, oh, you just download things from Thingiverse. All you do is print Pokemon. No, I don't just print Pokemon. I don't, I don't just download things from Thingiverse. I'm trying to learn and I'm trying to create my own objects, just like the people who are watching the videos like this. So think of it this way, if you don't get fidget spinners like I didn't even just a few days ago, don't see it as a way of creating a device that's just gonna distract you for hours on end. Think of this as a video that's going to teach you a little something and give you an idea of how to use it and then you can take what you've learned and make something else. And I'm not gonna lie, uh, these things are fun. Holy cow, you guys, these fidget spinners, these, these things, uh, they're wonderful. I, so far in my, in my few days of now having one, i I find that all I do when I'm, if I'm reading something or, or if I'm trying to concentrate hard, then I'll, I'll just spin this in this hand or, or I'll spin it in this hand. And I think that that fidgeting actually occupies whatever brain power I'm, I'm using to, to do something with my hands and it lets me concentrate further. I know that isn't the case for everybody, but it is for me and I get a cool toy. One of the comments I got on the last video and, and one of the things I heard in real life is, Joel, you know, you you have this fidget spinner, you need a bearing in the middle, but the bearings on the outside, those can get kind of pricey. Why don't you use nuts? That's what I did. I went to the Home Depot and I picked up these half inch 13 nuts. These are gonna be super easy to use and I'm gonna use these in, in a bunch of different spinners, but my son David said, Daddy, can you make it with these? These are three quarter inch nuts and they're friggin' huge. And the idea is to create a spinner using these three as weights on the arms. In order to create a fusion model that's using a polygon such as this, it's not too difficult and not too far away from the previous tutorial. But one of the things you need to do is take a measurement. Get yourself some calipers and measure across two of the flat surfaces of the polygon and get an average round number. So here I've got 27.95, here I've got 27.97, here I've got 27.94. It looks like these aren't precise on the outside. They just wanna make it so a socket or a wrench can grip it. But that 28 number on average is going to be what we're going to use in the software. Now that we have the measurement of this nut, Let's go to Fusion 360. All right, we're in Fusion 360. This is awesome. And one of the things that I'm gonna tell you to do right now is the something that everybody always tells you to do. You need to create a component. That's like the first thing you need to do. So I went create new component and I'm gonna title it Figgle Stickle Muggle Butt. You can call it whatever you want, but Figgle Stickle Muckle Butt is gonna be my component. There it is. Now I need to create a new sketch. I'm gonna create a sketch and I'm gonna use the green red plane right here. Easy enough. First, we're gonna lay down the part for our bearing. Again, it's C for circle. I'm gonna drag it out and do 22.05 because that's the diameter of the bearing uh, plus just a little bit, just a little bit. I'm gonna hit C again and I'm gonna drag it out from the center and I'm gonna type in 28 and that's just kind of that border around the bearing that we want. Now for the meat and potatoes, and it's surprisingly easy. Go up to sketch, go down to polygon, and do circumscribed polygon because that creates it from the center. And since the center is this green line right here, just pick, go down, and hit enter. That's it. But Joel, you didn't measure anything. Don't worry, we're getting there. Because it's a circumscribed center polygon, it's gonna stay on this green line. So now what I need you to do is hit D for dimension. And you're gonna click the top part of the polygon, you're gonna click the bottom part, you're gonna bring it out here, and you're gonna type in 28, because that was the measurement we took for that giant, giant nut that my son said we needed to use. Great, 
Now, this polygon is sized appropriately. So let's grab it, let's see, come here you. Let's grab it, move it up just a little bit. Just like that. Perfect. Now what we need to do is create the surrounding perimeter around the thing that's gonna hold that nut. And you could create something that is uh, a, a, a polygon as well. You could do a circle. I'm gonna show you how to do it with a polygon. But, you know, again, this is just kind of giving you some ideas. So I just went to polygon. I'm going to drag it down and I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to hit enter. And that's it. It's just like that. One of the things that's cool about Fusion 360 is the ability to go back. And since we did the D for dimensioning this one, don't forget, it's 28 millimeters. But at the same time, you want to give a little bit of play just in case. So why don't we do 28.0? Oops. I hit enter on accident. That's crazy. 28.05. Easy. Fusion 360 then adjusts that and makes it good. It also seems that we're really close to this circle, and so you can make a design decision. I'm going to click these two lines, and I'm going to move them up or down. So this is then going to not be connected to the surrounding part of the bearing. And you could connect it if you really want to. It doesn't matter. It's just personal preference at this point. The way I moved it is I selected a line. I held shift. I selected another line and then dragged and moved. All right, we have the thing that's going to hold the nut and we have the thing that's going to hold the bearing. Now we need to connect those things together. This is where it gets kind of fun. I'm going to do C for a center circle. I'm going to go right to the top of the uh, surrounding part around the bearing and I'm going to drag it out and just visualize where it's meeting up. And that looks about good. Just like, oops, just like that. Hit C again and drag another one out and give some space. Just like that. All right. That's it. That's it. So let's recap. We made the circle for the bearing enclosure. And then we made a polygon enclosure. And the reason dimensioning the polygon made it all shrink is because it knows it's a polygon, so all of the angles uh, have to remain the same. Then we drew this circle. And then we drew another circle. And you're probably wondering why, but we're going to get to that in just a second. Go ahead and click Stop Sketch. It's right behind, um, I think my image is, is right, right behind. <laughs> it's right over that Stop Sketch. I'm sorry about that. Uh, hold down shift, look around, there it is. That's it. I'm going to hit E for extrude, and I'm going to pick the parts I want. I want this, and I definitely want this part and this. And I want these arms around the side, and I want this. I want this. This, finally, this. And again, one bearing is going to be seven millimeters deep, so let's do seven. And there is where the bearing goes, and this is where the nut goes. Now we need to, what do we do now? I'm going to wait five, four, three, two, one. If you guessed pattern, that's correct. I believe it's under create, pattern, circular pattern. We're going to make sure the pattern type is bodies. I'm going to select this body. As for the axis, I'm going to select the blue one. Since we were drawing on red-green, that means the blue one is the axis we want to rotate around. And I click that. It gives us the preview. That looks pretty good. I do want three. I'm going to hit OK. We're so close to being done. The last part, if you remember from the previous tutorial, is to combine. So I'm going to go modify, combine, and I'm going to click one, two, three. Make sure it's a join operation and hit OK. And that's it. Now we're done. And this is a pretty cool looking spinner right here. You've got the three weights at the end of the arms and they are connected to the centerpiece directly, but with, with these arms that kind of reach out. It's, it's, a neat, it's a neat pattern. And again, you, you go to make, you go 3D print, you uncheck send to 3D print utility, make sure refinement is high, and then you select what you want out and you hit OK. But we're not going to do that. We already did the time lapse on the, on the last one. You know what that looks like. I've already created something very similar to this. Let me show you. 
that was pretty simple, and uh, this is the ones. These are the ones that I created. They're they're pretty cool. I did start out with a shape just like this, and the shape itself uh, wasn't didn't have any fillets on it, so it was a little sharp on the edges. So of course, I went again and I added some fillets, and I came up with these shapes right here. One of these has the size for the nut at 28 millimeters, and one of them has the size at 28.05, and I don't quite remember which one has the bigger opening. Um, well, one of them. We'll figure this out. Now it's time to test it. There it goes. It's a pretty tight fit, but I think that's what we want. Number two. And uh, number three. There we go. So look at this. This is a giant <laughs> three-quarter inch nut weighted um, spinner. And uh, I do have some bearings left over, so let's take a bearing. We'll sneak it right in the center. And then I do have the caps that I printed. Remember, these were the caps that were uh, had the fillets on them. These do not. So we'll attach, we'll attach, we'll space it out, and here we go for the initial spin. That's not too bad. The weight on that is really good. It spins really well. If I put a ceramic bearing in the middle, it may spin even better. Uh, the, the weight is good on a spinner. It feels, it feels just really good to spin around. Okay, this is good. I showed you how to make the holes for the nuts using calipers to measure across two flat sides of the polygon. Now my challenge to you is to make your own but using a different sized nut. Like I said, I've got the I've got the half inch nuts here that I will be making more spinners with, but I want you to now try to make a spinner design in Fusion 360 or Tinkercad or Onshape or whatever you're using, and I'd like you to use a different sized nut. And if that's too easy, my second challenge to you is to now take the ability to make a polygon shaped hole in plastic and adapt it to something in your life. Whether that's a, a cool cap over a nut to screw onto something to make it look better or perhaps you could build something out of plastic where the nuts then embed themselves and you can screw screws into it to look cool. That's my second challenge, my advanced challenge. All right, and finally one more thing I will show you. I did take the original design and I just doubled it in height. In Simplify 3D, which is what I use to print this, you can, uh, you can adjust uh, the, the scale in any, any direction. So I took Z and I just doubled it from 7 to 14. Let's see how this one works. What's interesting about this design having more than one bearing in the center, it means that each uh, thumb pad or finger pad is going to have its own spinning mechanism. So it might feel different. There's only one way to find out. Okay, here we go. So here is the original, and here is the double spinner. Let's give it a go. That's interesting. Because there are two bearings in the middle, this pad can rotate independently of this pad. It's a good table spinner as well. This one feels really good, really smooth, and having two bearings in the middle may contribute to it having that smooth, that smooth feeling. I wonder what that would do for our three-quarter inch weighted spinner. Thankfully, I came prepared. This one is, again, twice the height of the previous one. This is 14 millimeters tall, while this one is just seven. Let's load it up. Let's just see if it spins first. All right. Let's add some weight. Oh, those weights are tight. I don't think I'm gonna be getting those back out. Wow. All right, everyone out there with the single spinners, you're missing out. Holy cats. Boy, that's tough. So I didn't prepare this before the video. I had printed this. I did not test fit anything. I just thought, let's just do it for the video. Why not do it for the video, Joel? Just, just do it for the video. I guess this is why you always test things before you put them on video. Double thickness three-quarter inch weighted spinner. Let's see what happens. Oh, that's smooth. And it feels weird with these two independent pads. Oh, 
that's really cool. And now that it's double in height, we can actually use it as a table spinner as well. <laughs> there we go. Will it go the other way? Oh, wicked. Well, let's call it good right there. To recap, I showed you how to make a polygon shaped hole in your model and I showed you how to make it at a specific size by using calipers to measure the nut across two of the flat sides. I also told you about using double bearings in the spinners. I don't know, where do we go from here? I think the next step in doing these spinner tutorials is to make a different pad mechanism. And I have some cool ideas for that, but in order to hear those ideas, you'll just have to wait until next time. Thank you again for watching. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. If you're already subscribed, don't forget to ring the bell to be notified of cool videos like this. A big thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com and a really big thanks to everyone that lets the ads play. That really helps the channel a lot. And finally, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, high five.